Hey you guys, my name is Lauren and today I'm gonna walk you through how I do an expensive brunette. So I'm gonna take this doll head here. She's about a natural level six and we're going to just kind of give her dimension. To me, that is what makes a brunette look very expensive not necessarily trying to get her as light as possible but adding dimension and making sure that we give her a really rich tone so I'm gonna walk you through exactly how I do that and I'm also going to do this in as little amount of foils as possible because a lot of the time I get way too carried away with foils so I wanted to show you guys a way that you can deliver a beautiful foliage without having to spend way too much time on it So right here, I'm just mixing my first formula, and that's just going to be 20 volume and lightener. My favorite consistency to mix to is about like the consistency of toothpaste. So it's not so thin that you can't work with it and it flies around, but it's not so thick that you can't move it. You're gonna get a great amount of lift by doing it this way. So my goal for this expensive brunette is to maximize my amount of impact that I'm able to create while using the least amount of foils as possible. So I'm going to start in the front and work my way back. For the first foil, I'm just going to do a fine weave. So not necessarily a baby light, but not necessarily a full size weave. And I'm going to just be working on the front section with my lightener and I pin the back part of the weave out of the way. I'm gonna do a slight tease at the top just to create a little bit of extra softness, but I still want that face frame to be nice and bold. I'm going to apply the lightener in a diagonal. So the highest point is gonna be right at the part line and the lowest point is gonna go away from the face. That makes it so that you can create a little bit of dimension even in that face frame area. I just don't like when the face frame money piece, if you will, is just so stark and contrasted from everything else. I love when there's always even a little bit of dimension in that brighter pop in the front. So that is the way I achieve that. Now, as I move to the sections behind this first section, what I'm going to be doing is pivoting the angle of my sections by about 30 degrees. And what this does is it allows me to concentrate brightness right in that focal point at the part line and just around the face. And then it starts dispersing brightness a little bit further as you move back away from the focal point. So the end result is a nice bright face frame with more dispersed dimension just behind it. So if you happen to see a cute little lady running around in the background with gray hair, that's actually my mom. She's so adorable. She's actually growing out her gray hair right now. So if you see her, let's play a little game of I Spy. If you see my mom, let me know in the comments and let her know how much you like her gray grow out because she would really love to hear that. My mom used to be a hairstylist. She's who inspired me to become a hairstylist myself. So I owe so much to her. I love her so much. And then also my dad is the cameraman today. So I have both my parents helping and it's kind of just a dream to work with them. I absolutely adore my parents. They have inspired me to do everything that I've ever done in life. And they are so creative. So it's so fun to have them be a part of this with me. So after you've done the hairline, you're gonna be finished after you've done a total of only three foils. So then you can move on to the other side, so easy. So once the hairline is done, three foils on either side, I'm going to take the hair that's left out and we're gonna move it forward, over direct it forward and back comb it and just tip out those ends. And that just makes it so that you can have some dimension in the top of the face frame moving into a smooth transition into a little bit more boldness at the bottom of the face frame. This just makes it look so natural. A tip whenever you're doing tip outs that I found really helpful is to always make sure that you do them as soon as you place the highlights instead of waiting to the very end. This way you can make sure that everything processes at the same speed and is hopefully ideally done all at the same time. So right here I'm moving on to the side sections and I'm just following sections that mirror the hairline. So I'm just going to take a slice and we're gonna do the same type of weave that we did for the rest of the hairline right at the part line. So that means I'm just doing that kind of normal size weave, pinning the back of that weave out of the way and working on the front with my lightener, doing a soft little tease at the top as well. If you guys enjoy my tutorials, would you do me a favor and like this video? Maybe share it with a friend, somebody that it could really help. And of course, make sure you subscribe and let me know in the comments if you have questions or if you just want to tell me what you think. 
Also, for those of you that are interested in doing education with me, I have some online courses available as well as some ebooks that will really help you. One that is really popular is my um, toning Bible, and it's an ebook that just describes exactly how you can become more confident with formulating toners. It walks you through a step by step process that you can memorize so that you don't have to feel um, kind of locked up when it's time to make a decision about toning at the bowl. And I also have some other online courses that you can check out, and those are really great because on YouTube you can get so much information and there's lots of great things out on YouTube, but I wanted to create something where I can just have. A lot of interaction with you personally look at your work you can do um, guided practice with me through these online courses that's the main purpose of me providing them and they're also really affordable so if you're interested in that take a look in the description below to check those out So here in the back, I'm continuing with vertical sections that I'm just continuing off of the side partings that I took before. I'm taking thick weaves in order to create maximum dimension and back combing to keep transition smooth. A lot of times it's difficult to add dimension without sacrificing that blend, but this technique right here will help a ton. You can get that balayage dimension with the lift and consistency that pretty much only foils can offer. Once I've done about three foils, I'm just going to take all the hair in between those foils and back comb them significantly to where I just have a thin piece. And this is just so I can add a touch more brightness to her ends. After I've done that, I'm just gonna jump to the other side, finish that side all the way to the middle of the back of her head, and then I'm gonna show you what I do on the top. For this top section, I'm going to do diagonal back sections that gradually become more horizontal as I move toward the part line. This section angle paired with creating a diagonal pattern with the lightener itself pushes brightness toward the face and creates depth as you move away from the face. If the goal is to make someone an expensive brunette, the highlights have to be placed very strategically and so do the shadows because the trick is to give the client who's a natural brunette beautiful dimensional highlights while keeping them a categorical brunette and not overdoing it so that they look almost blonde. This placement achieves blended dimension just beautifully. Now let's go ahead and check the foils in the front. These are the first ones that we did. We're looking for about a level eight. A level eight will give you enough lift to remove that potent orange undertone that you have in dark hair while still leaving enough pigment for a rich tone to grab onto without fading too quickly.
A lot of people struggle with getting out the tea, so if that's something that you struggle with, you can try this. Right now, I'm just kind of gently brushing out the teas while it's still dry, but I'm going to do it very quickly so that no lightener is spreading to other areas of the hair. I'm going to do it quickly just as much as I can within a few minutes before it gets wet because once it gets wet, it is a lot more difficult to remove the teas. So let's do as much as we can just for a few minutes and then go ahead and rinse everything out. So I'm just going to brush everything out here just so we can see our placement before we start to color melt. And as you can see, she's got some pretty highlights in her hair, but she's also got lots of dimension and her natural left in there. So what we're going to do with the color melting is to create more dimension at the root and create that gradual transition into brighter ends, but still keep everything very muted and very soft. The goal is to kind of create almost the same level maybe a level or two lighter than her natural but just to give the tone a little more richness so that when it sits next to her natural hair it just looks so much more interesting and so much prettier the first formula is going to be my root shadow and i'm just going to use redken shades eq 4nb and 5n equal parts with the gel processing solution 4nb is a slightly warmer natural and adding that to my formula is just going to prevent anything from going muddy or too cool at the root. We want to keep everything as rich as possible. Over the rest of the hair, I'm going to apply a global gloss and I'm going to test out a new chocolate series that Shades EQ is offering. I'm so excited to try this out. I think it's perfect to use for an expensive brunette, but it's something I've never used before. So just as a tip, what I do when I try out a new shade is I could do swatches, but also what I like to do is use the shades that I would just normally choose without any knowledge of these new shades and then just make the new shade one third of my final formula. So this way I can test out the new shade without having to fully commit until I'm confident using it. And here you can see what it looks like as it's being blow dried. It's straight, but you can still see lots of dimension, which is such a trademark for that expensive brunette trend. And I think that's one reason that clients really, really are loving this look. Even though I'm such a huge fan of blonding, this was also just a really fun thing to do, just to enhance a brunette. I'm personally really excited about the fact that people are excited about brunettes because mostly everything you see online is blonde. Let me know what you guys think of this trend as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. We recently just hit 40,000 subscribers on YouTube and I have you to thank for that. I can't believe there are people who actually watch my videos. So thank you so much and I will see you in the next video.